Welcome to the Ultimate Gaming Realm, and this is your creator, Dixon, logging on. Twisted Metal. Another one of the first PlayStation games that I got into since the beginning, as well as Twisted Metal being an ultimate launch title for the PlayStation in late 1995. Twisted Metal is the king of 3D vehicle combat. 3D vehicle combat meaning of destruction, explosions, and eliminating your enemies with the choice of 12 high octane powered vehicles with each vehicle having its own strong points and weak points. Either in the single player story with 6 stages of destruction or in the 2 player split screen versus battle. The combination of all the elements surrounding that category worked. Twisted Metal was also a pioneer for many other 3D vehicle combat games such as Vigilante 8 and Rogue Trip. And there's also many knockoffs to Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal is a franchise that's been owned by Sony Computer Entertainment from day one. And one of the main designers, creators, and key people behind the Twisted Metal games is Dave Jaffe. I think that's how you pronounce it who happens to be the same genius behind God of War. And Twisted Metal was developed by Single Track. Single Track also developed another PlayStation launch title, Warhawk. Twisted Metal for me was the first well-known 3D destructive driving game that I remembered. I don't actually think it's the first of its kind when it comes to that regard, but pretty much console-wise at least. These digitized graphics were just awesome. Especially these cheesy profile images for those vehicles during the selection screens. And they never get old. Unlike the graphics, the control schemes was quite different back then. And if you're more used to the controls of the modern driving games, you will definitely lose track of the old control scheme for driving. Well, if you're a younger generation gamer, then you probably wouldn't understand at all. Unless if you're a hardcore video game historian such as myself. But Twisted Metal does have multiple control options at least. All 12 combatants have their own special weapon that comes with a signature sound effect, like Sweet Tooth's clown laugh. I know Sweet Tooth has always been the main face and mascot out of all the characters in the Twisted Metal franchise, but to me Sweet Tooth isn't the best choice to use. But then again, it depends on your choice of stats and abilities, and how good you are with the vehicle. All vehicles can carry up to 30 weapons, such as different types of missiles, mines, and other projectiles. I also love the way how you can change camera views from either a third person view or a first person cockpit view. Depending on what situation I'm dealing with, I like to change camera views back and forth. And by the way, the camera change only works in the single player mode, which is understandable. The replay value for Twisted Metal is not much for today's standards, but back then it was extremely high for both single player and local multiplayer split screen. The soundtrack for Twisted Metal is bloody awesome, and it fits perfectly with the game. The music's so bloody awesome that it can be played back on any music CD player. And that, in fact, the soundtrack is one of the main reasons why it gets me going back into Twisted Metal the most. Twisted Metal does have a story set in the streets of Los Angeles on Christmas Eve in 2005, set 10 years after the game's release. And it's now been 12 years since 2005. And Twisted Metal is set on Christmas Eve. If I were to remember that by last Christmas, I would have worked on this review then. Since I now remember, I should now pull the plug on this review and put the plug back in for this review during the next Christmas month. On second thought, ah, the hell with waiting. Besides, once I start on the project, I make sure I get this project done ASAP. The runner of the Twisted Metal contest is hosted by a power-hungry psychopath named Calypso. And there's contest history information in the options section of the game so that way you can do a little research on the backstory. According to the Twisted Metal setting, the contest happens to be a 10th anniversary battle. 
where you bow through war zone stages such as the underground arena, the warehouse district warfare, the freeway free for all, the river park rumble, suburbia, and last but not least, the rooftop combat. And the main boss of Twist and Metal was the previous Twist and Metal winner, a non-playable character, Minion, who's powerful as all goes out. You fight Minion on the rooftop after you dealt with the normal competitors. And if you defeat Minion, then you complete the game. Twist and Metal does not have a save feature because it uses a 5 button password. Of course passwords was still a trend at the time. Shortly after 95 or 96 they pretty much did away with this password fiasco and started doing saves. Which you must have a memory card in order to save. So memory card is most certainly a recommended to have in order to play games. But since the Twist and Metal doesn't have a save feature, memory card is not required. So you use the passwords for this one. And the cool thing about the password fiasco for this one, it's simple. Overall, the first two Twist Metal games will always be part of my wonderful PlayStation memories. And yes, I will make a separate video on Twist and Metal 2 eventually. And both Twist Metal games are not difficult to get physically. They're both also available on the PlayStation Store for the PlayStation 3 for $5.99 each. More than a fair deal if you ask me. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching, so please do like, comment below, and subscribe to my Ultimate Gaming Realm YouTube channel, or you can find me on my social apps, like Facebook or Twitter. Till next time, this is Dixon of the Ultimate Gaming Realm, logging off.